In the next 10 minutes, you're going to learn how to make people believe that you are fluent in English, even if you're not. Watch until the end for a quick summary of all the important points, a quiz, and I am going to show you how you can practice your speaking. So many of you have been asking me for English speaking practice, and I have a solution for you that is extremely affordable and convenient. So watch until the end, and I'm going to tell you all the details. Look, there's a lot more to English language learning and communication besides perfect grammar and native-like pronunciation. You don't need 100% accuracy or 100% correct on your test in order for other people, even native English speakers, to think, hey, he's fluent, or wow, her English is so good. Let me tell you how to get other people to believe in your English fluency, even if you don't really believe in it yourself. There's a lot more to English than perfect grammar, a huge vocabulary, and long sentences. So many of you ask me, Gabby, how can I make longer sentences? Gabby, how can I memorize more vocabulary? Teacher, how can I improve my grammar? And look, all of these things are important, but they are not the top priority, I would say. So many of us are distracted by these topics when we really need to be looking over here at what is even more important. Did you know that grammar, pronunciation, vocabulary, these are really only roughly 40% of English language learning and communication if you want to be an effective effective, good English speaker, then you need to consider the other 60% of what makes up our communication. Things that are not related to perfect grammar or native English speaker-like pronunciation. Again, those things are nice to have, but they're not the only consideration. Let me tell you how to improve your English without grammar, without perfect pronunciation, without the biggest vocabulary in the world. English speaking fluency, English language learning is 60% made up of the way you communicate, the way you express yourself, the way that you stress words when you speak, your tone of voice and your intonation, which by the way are different, but that's a whole nother lesson. It's about your confidence in the way you communicate with others, your gestures, your facial expression, your smile. These are all ways that we communicate that are very important, even more important than perfect grammar. A huge part of communication that many English language teachers and learners don't spend enough time on is how you make other people feel when you communicate. When you make other people feel good and positive about interacting with you, they're going to consider you to be a more fluent English speaker. Of course, improving some little parts of your English speaking that have to do with grammar and pronunciation can help as well. Let me give you some really specific tips and strategies to help you improve your speaking and your fluency, even if it's not perfect. But first, I see we are so close to hitting 2 million subscribers here at Go Natural English. So won't you take a quick second to subscribe if you haven't yet and help us reach this milestone? I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. This is my life's work and my passion to help you learn English. So show the Go Natural English team that you are enjoying these lessons and that motivates us to make more for you. Obviously, this topic is not for pure beginners. I know someone out there right now is thinking, but Gabby, I can't just smile and make people think I'm fluent in English if I know zero English. Of course not, but this English lesson is for intermediate and up English speakers. Even low intermediate, you can really benefit from this. You guys, you have to understand that English fluency is not just about having perfect grammar. It's about the way you express yourself 
holistically, your gestures, your smile, your confidence, your willingness to make mistakes, your willingness to ask questions when you don't know the right word to use. How do I say this in English? Maybe you describe it in other words and then you come to realize, to understand the best word to use. It's a process. Some people think that in order to be fluent in English, you have to memorize your English textbook front to back and know it inside and out like the back of your hand. Hey, there is a nice English idiom like the back of your hand to know something very well. But this is not true. In fact, the most fluent, confident English speakers who I have met, who are, of course, English language learners, they didn't really study a textbook very closely at all. They pay attention to situational communication, clues, how to interact in the most common situations, and clues like whether the other people in the conversation were understanding them or not, or maybe they need to clarify or ask questions to reach communication. You see, we have to be creative in our communication and apply it to the situations that we encounter most often in our everyday lives. And I'm willing to bet a lot of money that your everyday life doesn't involve pure textbook conversations, unless maybe you're a full-time student. But if you want to learn English and use English in an everyday kind of situation for work or for social reasons or maybe for travel or to enrich your life, we need to go out of the textbook. So stop memorizing your textbook. You don't need to read every page on it and memorize it. What we do need to do is this, some very specific strategies and practice ideas. First of all, you have at home right now a free and very effective tool that you've probably been using every day, but not to learn English. So as an English language learner, I highly recommend that you use your mirror to help you to become more fluent. Now, there are two ways that you can do this. The more traditional way to help you improve your pronunciation is to look closely at your mouth while you speak English. Are you enunciating the sounds clearly? Are you opening your mouth as much as you need to to really create the clear sounds in English? The other way that you need to use your mirror is to practice speaking with confidence, with a smile, with your posture straight like a confident person sitting up tall in your chair or standing up tall if you're standing. We have to practice confidence in the way we look when we speak English. Let me tell you, confidence counts a lot more than you think. And I know a lot of very proficient English language learners who are not confident and therefore other people do not think that they are as fluent as they could be with just a little bit more confidence. So use your mirror, look at yourself, speak English in the mirror, even if it's just saying, hello. Instead of saying hello, say hello. Raise your voice with confidence. Speak loudly, speak clearly, smile, and stand tall. Chin up when you speak English. Fake it until you make it. Another great idiom that will help you with your English fluency and make others believe you are more fluent than you really are. Why is it that so many people get perfect test scores or high TOEFL, TOEIC, or IELTS test scores, but when it's time to speak English in the real world with native English speakers in a real life conversation, they freeze up. So many people have this problem and it's a confidence issue. It's not an English fluency issue. Another trick that you can use that's free and already something that you have is to record yourself on video. Use your smartphone or your computer to record yourself while you're speaking and then review what you see. Do you see a confident English speaker? 
on that video? Or do you see someone who looks kind of tense and nervous when they speak? If so, then you can take some steps to relax yourself when you speak English, take a deep breath, and use mindset training to develop your self-confidence. Understand that making mistakes is not a bad thing, and other people are not judging you as much as you are judging yourself. Understand that others want you to speak English and learn, and they want to help you. Speaking of other English speakers, pay close attention to what you're hearing, especially when you have the chance to listen to an English speaker you really admire. If you know of someone, whether it's someone you know in real life or just through the internet or TV, watch how they speak. Listen to the way they speak and copy that. What do you notice about the way that they are speaking that attracts you? Could you mimic the way that they are speaking, whether it's the stress or the tone of their voice or the smile that they bring when they're speaking? Could you mimic them little by little to develop your English confidence and your speaking fluency? Try copying some everyday phrases from other native English speakers or fluent English speakers. Like, instead of just copying what your textbook tells you to say, I'm fine, thank you and you, try phrases that you hear outside of your textbook like, how's it going? Nice to see you. And really pay attention to how people say these words because it's not just about how you read the phrases on paper. It's about how you say them with confidence, with joy, with happiness, so that other people think, wow, this person really feels good about their English. They must be fluent. Increase the number of phrases that you have on hand ready to use in your active English vocabulary little by little. Start with phrases that are not so specific to unique situations that you may never encounter. This is why I had a huge problem with my Spanish textbook when I saw on page one the first Vocabulary words we had to learn were zoo animals, like hippopotamo, hippopotamus. How many times per day do we talk about hippopotamuses? Never! So start with phrases that you're going to use on a daily basis, like the example I gave, how's it going? Nice to see you. How do you start a conversation? What phrases do you want to use to continue a conversation or to end a conversation. Maybe you'd like to be able to speak in more detail about specific topics like your work or your hobbies or your interests, but that we can build over time. Don't worry about having all of the vocabulary words ready to go. Just start building your phrases that you have on hand, just like having tools in your toolbox that you're going to use every day in common situations. And this is how we build our fluency because we're using these phrases over and over. The people that we use these phrases with, how's it going? How you doing? Nice to see you. Uh, I gotta run. Nice talking to you. They're going to hear you using these phrases often and they're going to think, wow, this person really knows English. They sound just like a fluent English speaker, even though you may not know how to talk about every topic in detail. That comes with time. So let's prioritize your English to the phrases that you need to use most often. This is the 80-20 rule of English to really focus on the 20% of phrases, I would say less, maybe 5% of phrases that you're going to use 80 to 95% of the time in English conversation. And let's be real, people don't use that much advanced vocabulary in everyday conversations. I remember when I was traveling and I would meet new people, I could bet money the three things that they would say right away. 
what's your name? Where are you from? Where are you going next? Where are you traveling next? I knew based on that situation what they would ask me. So the most important thing is to really think about your situation. Where are you using your English? How are you using your English? With whom? And develop your English around that and not dependent on your English textbook because your English textbook doesn't know you or your life. Only you do. Speaking of English fluency, I know what you're thinking. How can I practice my English speaking? How can I build my confidence? I don't want to just practice on my own. I want a speaking partner. I want a tutor. I want an English teacher. Okay, I'm going to share with you my best solution for you to practice online with a expert native English teacher in just a minute. First, let's recap what we've learned today. I have three quiz questions to see if you got it. All right, first question, what are three things that you can do to make people think that you're more fluent than you really are? Tell me in the comments. Number two, what did I say is most important for communication? The accuracy of your English or the way you speak English? What do you think? Tell me your answer in the comments. I'm going to tell you the true answer in just a moment. But number three, what is one simple free tool that you probably already have at home, maybe in your bag, purse, backpack, whatever, that you can use to help you improve your confidence speaking English? The answer to number one, what are three things that you can do to make people think you are more fluent than you really are? Number one, smile. Number two, build your confidence. And number three, increase the number of phrases for everyday conversation use that you are comfortable with using. The answer to number two, I believe that the way you speak English makes you seem more fluent than your accuracy in English. Now, of course, this depends, but overall, I think that the English language learners who are able to communicate in a confident and joyful way are really the ones who are considered more fluent than the ones who may be more accurate, but who don't communicate with confidence. Now, of course, the best thing is to be confident, joyful English speakers who are also accurate. But I'm talking about how you can become more fluent or seen as more fluent before you might have that perfect accuracy in English. What's a simple free tool you can use to help you improve your English? I mentioned a mirror or also recording yourself on your smartphone, laptop, or computer. Now, let me tell you how you can practice your English speaking and build your confidence anytime, anywhere, even from the comfort of your own home, anywhere with internet, with a company called Lingoda, my top trusted choice for online language lessons in English, business English, French, German, or Spanish. This is an amazing company that has great native expert tutors who will help coach you in small group lessons with three to five students on average. They will help you improve your English, your speaking, practice and your confidence at a very affordable rate, just about eight euros, that's under 10 US dollars per lesson. With their small class sizes that average three to four students or maximum five students, you get the attention that you need to improve your English skills as an individual. Lingoda small group classes are offered 24 seven, really at lots of different hours and days of the week. So you can choose a time that works for you. And there's tons of different topics from grammar to vocabulary and more. And it's not just basic English, like how to order a coffee or call a cab. They really help you to learn how to express yourself with confidence. And now Lingoda has rebranded their online school to be more modern and it looks awesome. They've added features like quizzes and homework to give you more materials to practice with. Now is a great time to try Lingoda because they're offering a seven day free trial where you can take three classes and see if it's right for you. This is free for you to try. So it would be crazy not to take advantage of. This is worth 40 euros and you're getting it for free. You can 
open the description down there and find the link for you to start your free seven day trial and take three lessons for free. Just click on the link right down there. Lingoda also hosts the popular language sprint, which I talked about in a previous video. I'll link to that in the description as well so that you can see if you might want to have a more intense, immersive experience and the chance to learn for three months for free if you complete all of the sprint lessons. So check that out. There's two great options, but they're separate. So if you choose the seven day free trial, then that doesn't apply to the sprints and vice versa. So look at which one you might want to choose. If you're not sure, I highly recommend trying the free seven day trial so that you can have those three lessons to see if it's right for you with no risk and no charge. Check the link out in the description and you can start there with your English speaking practice. While English is my native language, I've personally taken Spanish language lessons with Lingoda and I loved their lessons. Their teachers were so nice and helpful and it gave me a boost to my confidence in speaking Spanish. Just being able to have that practice time with a native Spanish speaker teacher. So I highly recommend that you check out the Lingoda online lessons for speaking practice. It's fast, it's easy, it's convenient. Why wouldn't you try the free trial? You've got this. Whether you feel like it's a long road to fluency, I promise you these are the kinds of tricks that will help you to be seen as a more fluent and confident English speaker. You've got this. There is no time like now to start developing your English skills. Don't worry about perfection. Love your English skills as they are and build your confidence along with your accuracy in English and you will be fluent in no time and others will think that you're already fluent. So this is the best way for you to move forward with your English skills with a little bit of fake it until you make it while putting the effort in to improve your skills, really improve your accuracy little by little. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, make sure to subscribe to Go Natural English and visit gonaturalenglish.com where you can find all of our best free English tips. There are hundreds of them at gonaturalenglish.com. I'll see you there.